I think it's fair to say that we would all love to have more time for training and recovery, but in reality, as age groupers, we're trying to fit in a job, around family commitments, maybe even a little bit of a social life, all around your training. And I expect that I'm not alone when I say I look on at the pros with envy as they just dream of having an uninterrupted training session and recovery. Well. In reality, that isn't always true, especially if you add a toddler into the mix. Well, that is the exact circumstance for pro triathlete Radhika Kalfal, who gave birth to her first child back in January 2018 and managed to go on and win a 70.3 Ironman just 11 weeks after. Well, I want to know just how she does it and what tips she could give us. And Radhika has very kindly invited us into her home just ahead of the Ironman 70.3 World Championships. So I think it's time we went and found out. Pretty look. My mum has a small place. Oh, so. Wow. But yeah, she's the same mum. Wow. After transition. Here we go. Go. Iron, iron girl, here you come. Well, Rebecca, thanks so much for fitting us in, because as I can see, it's pretty hectic, like, trying to do all of this before a race. But I want to find out how you managed to. And, you know, since your life's obviously changed dramatically 19 months ago, and you're still performing at the very top level. What are your kind of key points or tips that you could share with, you know, the time crunch age group athlete? And yeah, how have you adapted your training? Hi, Heather. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, well, yep, everything changed since Ruby was born. Um, and yeah, you have to be really time efficient. So there's no time for um, really junk mileage. Yeah. Um, so. Our, I think the best thing was to do uh, most of the training rides on, on wind trainer mm -hmm. and the run on treadmill. Um, yeah, the wind trainer would be really boring if you don't have a set session. So I actually love it if, if Brett tells me, okay, you do 20 minute warm up, then four times eight minutes Ironman pace with four minutes easy in between. And then, I don't know, some more five, five minutes and then warm down. It goes much quicker and you get a really good workout and you are done in two hours yeah. and this was great because I know if I push really hard for two hours it's good for me and then I'm quickly back with Ruby. And have you found that um, sort of affecting you as an athlete like getting re condensing I guess your your bike training how has that affected your performance and your in oh. your kind of yeah trajectory as an athlete? Yeah well it's just the mic because it's like we might struggle to catch yeah, it, pick bits up if. Well, yeah. If you just sort of cover again, then like so. Obviously, the the trainer is much more time efficient. But how, as a as an athlete, has that kind of helped you or changed the way you race or the you know the way you're competing? Um, I don't think I'm racing differently, um, but um, it really fits me well to do quality sessions and. I'm training roughly around only 20 hours a week. Okay. But it, more, most of it is, is uh, quality. So um, it's, it's great for me and great for the family as well because I just don't want to be away from Ruby the whole time. And um, it's a good motivation to do something very quick and then be back, back into... Uh, and what's, your, what's the longest bike ride that you now do? Uh, I do once a week a long long ride which now is only three and a half four hours okay um but actually another thing i don't have um any people to ride with anymore because i'm not like i can't say okay wednesday this time i'll be uh, i'll be there because it depends all on ruby so how she sleeps how we plan the day and so on so we, we decide okay this wednesday you ride long or next week i may ride long friday so i do all my rides most of my rides on my own. Mm -hmm. Do you have Do you have any tips, or is there anything you've changed in the order or the time of day that you train? Or if, so, if people have less time, do you find it more efficient to do it one end of the day or the other? Or and do you ever put your sessions sort of back to back to, to save time on warm up? Or, you know, because you're already warm for something. Yeah, well, I would say as a mum, you're warm up the whole day because you're chasing the baby. I really enjoy doing one one session of the day really early before the baby wakes up, if if it's yeah. possible, because I feel like. I'm not taking her time, mm -hmm. my time with her. Uh, and also it's easier to get out of the house because now when she's also saying, mama, mama, I feel like I don't want to go, but if she's still sleeping, I just go and yeah. it's... How do you plan your week and, and what could maybe other people who don't, you know, who have things come up at work and stuff, how do you deal with that 
not complete known because I imagine before you could say exactly what you're doing every day for the probably for the next few weeks. And that similarity with age group is if you know suddenly your boss calls you in for work or suddenly Ruby keeps you up at night. How do you deal with that and what's your kind of strategy? Yeah, you have to be really flexible because otherwise you wouldn't be able to do it because um, like you said, every day changes based on the baby or appointments. So most of the time, once Ruby goes to bed at night, I sit with Brad and say, okay, what's tomorrow? He tells me what I need to do and then we'll, okay, can Ruby go to a crash or is there grandma or can Ruby be with Brad? We just have to like plan the day and then how we decide it, it has to be exactly how it is. Like I can't, we can't decide that I'll ride before Ruby wakes up and then I'll just decide to sleep in. It's not possible. It has to be, otherwise you can't do the I think, uh, yeah, I think that's very similar in the fact you do, you have to be flexible until almost like the night before or, yeah. and then you know what your schedule looks like and you then And then you have stay. to hold it, yeah. yeah. Of course you could, you have to be even more flexible if we say, now you're getting up, but Ruby has, I don't know, growing teeth and you don't sleep the whole night, then, then you change it even yeah. <laughs> last minute. Yeah. Recovery is like a big part that I personally am like passionate about that, you know, you, everyone trains so hard but forgets that your body needs to recover. But obviously when you have less time, it's, it's easy to sit here and say, yeah, you should recover. How do you manage your recovery now? And it must be very different. Uh, it's definitely very different, uh, but the recovery is very important. You, you can't go without it. So I'm still making sure I have uh, once a week a massage, which is kind of the thing I'm like, living for because it it's not just the you know the body getting the recovery but the brain as well you just can switch off and you know someone's taking care for the baby and, and you can relax so it's it's very important for me but now most of my recovery is actually a re active recovery okay um it's basically following ruby either to a swimming pool or beach or you know climbing up with with her on a slide <laughs> God, that sounds exhausting. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm really tired and I'm like pre praying she wants to sit down and, and read a book, but <laughs> <laughs> you've got a few years here. to wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but also I've recently partnered with um, one uh, clothing company called Chimera right. and they are focused on um, like um, recovery pants and recovery clothes. Okay. And the, the material is... Um, in, in infrared yeah, uh, okay, material, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's very interesting and I now wear the pants most of the time when I'm at home, so even okay. when I'm cooking or doing stuff, yeah. um, this should already work on my yeah, recovery, yeah. Which, which is great. And you, you've touched it you know, quite a few times, obviously Brad, your husband, is your coach and he's the father of Ruby as well, yeah. so you're all very one tight-knit team, but I know Brad coaches age group athletes too and have you um, got any tips that you sort of absorb from him obviously working with you as a well we're having less time than you do but all, uh, all of his athletes having jobs as well are there any kind of other pointers that you can kind of think of that age groupers could could utilize to make the most of their time or anything that you see brad doing or giving to athletes less it's more yeah and if if they have some at least they have even just one hour a day and they can still do a proper training even for a full Ironman mm -hmm. so um, you just have to be really flexible and make the most of that one hour and don't don't chat around with <laughs> people you know some people can just have they say how busy they are but they have one and a half hour for for a whole swim but they are like you know 10 minutes before they jump in and yeah cleaning goggles and yeah. looking for pedals but you have to have everything ready you have this yeah. 90 minutes Window, or 60 minutes, yeah. just jump in and yeah, some, some have just a lunch break and yeah. they, we would still let, let them, okay, if you are able to do a, a solid one hour ride, even like on a wind trainer. When, when you have a young baby, I, I say a happy mom, happy baby and opposite. Yeah. So when you come from your, even if it's a, just a 30 minute jog, you, your hormones, you're happy and then you come home, you're happy, the yeah. baby is happy. Yeah. So it kind of works. Yeah. Works like I that. I think that's in, in, like even you know in life or like work. If you go and do a nice session at lunchtime, you come back to work. And, yeah, exactly. And you just feel it gives better. you like the yeah. extra energy and yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Of course, there's tough sessions where you yeah. tired, but if you if you know that you have done the time well yeah. or something, it gives you the other energy and yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So it's sometimes key just to remember that. Again. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah. It's easy when we're sat here on the sofa talking about it, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. Just don't care. Don't, you know, always, always do all those sessions and do them as hard as you like. Yeah. yeah. And then when you get to them, it's yeah. different. But yeah. Awesome. And well, thanks, Becca. That's a really, yeah, great insight. And I think we can get a real flavour for just how good you are at balancing everything and getting those key sessions in. You have to. <laughs> Otherwise, you... Yeah, and I think you... you I do it because I love the yeah. triathlon. So, otherwise, there would be so many excuses to to make, not to yeah. go for the training. Yeah. So, it's yeah. it's great. You're an inspiration. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Heather. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>